Uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to be with you again this year. It has been a very good year uh, for the village of Skokie. Uh, the economy is strong, it's booming in many respects, and it'll be my pleasure to give you some ideas of the direction in which we will be taking this next year. I do want to thank the sponsors for uh, bringing us together today and providing such a great atmosphere for all of us to get together. We couldn't do it without our partnerships with AT&T, Old Orchard, and the Illinois Science and Technology Park. Yesterday, uh, we laid to rest my uh, predecessor, Jackie Correll. Uh, I would ask you to keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, over the past six months or so, uh, the village board and I took complete credit for all of the accomplishments of Mayor Gorell. <laughs> she was responsible for the building of the North Shore Center for the Performing Arts in Skokie. She also was responsible, Howard, she was responsible, she was the driving force behind the sculpture park. It was her idea to go to the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District enter into a 99-year lease and every year for 10 years to buy a half a mile of land, develop it along the canal bank, and today we have the first and frankly the best outdoor sculpture park in Midwest United States. And it was a tribute to her. I used to have lunch with her uh, every six weeks or so. Uh, we used to meet at the old Skokie House. Uh, she was my seatmate on the village board as a trustee, and I learned a lot from her. And I remember one day we were having lunch, and as usual, we talked about family. She was a diehard Cubs fan, so I'm glad they won the World Series last year. I'm sure they won it for her. However, we also always talk politics. And the village was in a serious bind. Old Orchard Shopping Center had declined badly. The southern end was boarded up. It was an old, dilapidated, out of business Montgomery Wards. Some of you here may remember Montgomery Wards. We needed to find somebody to rehabilitate it, and the current owner was unable to find the money, and we were talking about what do we do. Took out a napkin and said, Let's, what kind of plan could we produce that maybe would encourage the redevelopment of Old Orchard, and at the same time, bring prosperity to the village of Skokie. We put three points on that napkin. And I have to say, I've always admired what she did. Freeze the property tax. At the time, her idea was freeze it for three years. Now, why would that, in the midst of a coming retail recession, be a smart thing to do? <coughs> But her thinking was, this will give the other districts, the schools, the parks, the library, a little bit of increment so that during a recession, they could increase their property taxes and remain solvent and deliver the great services they always have. She also felt very strongly that we needed to encourage business to come to Skokie. It worked out. Some of you may have heard of a little crusty man by the name of Sam Zell. Uh, I've met Sam Zell on a few occasions. Not once have I ever seen him enter it, uh, 
say a complete sentence without some kind of expletive. <laughs> but he is the only man I've ever met who had a hundred, a billion dollar line of personal line of credit. You wouldn't know it because rarely did he ever wear a tie. But he bought Old Orchard, hired the old owner, owner JMB, to redevelop it, and it was because of our village manager, uh, Al Ragoni, that we put into the agreement that Sam had to own the shopping center for five years before he flipped it. And the reason behind that was we knew he was going to flip it, that's what Sam Zell does. He buys low, develops, sells high. Thus, he's one of the richest men in the world, does it very well. However, Al felt, and we all agreed, that he would be tempted to do the project quickly, maybe not use the highest grade building materials, flip it, and then we would be left with not as good a product as we wanted. But if he had to keep it for five years, Zell put in $150 million into the project. Village put in $20 million. My colleagues and I lived on antacids for a year. <laughs> I mean, we got all kinds of, you know, the, the typical development spreadsheets. Your eyes just glaze over. Uh, we had made certain guarantees. We never had invested in a private project ever before. First time in our history. Uh, the other evening, I was uh, teaching a class for a friend of mine at the School of the Art Institute. It's called... Uh, politics and the arts. My job is to talk about economic development and the arts. And uh, one of the uh, students asked me, you've been in politics all your life, which is true. You've been on the village board since 84. What is the single biggest change that you've seen? I, I thought only for a second and I, I said, before, I, when I was on the village board in 84, if the village ever directly contributed a penny to a private business to encourage them, we would have been run out of town. Today, if we don't do that, we will be run out of town. The attitude of the citizenry is that government is to incentivize and create an atmosphere whereby we can have economic development. I think we've done that, but only because we're on the shoulders of all of you. You're the not-for-profits, you're the schools, the library, all of the businesses upon which we depend in a partnership to get those kinds of things done. This last year, we received two commendations that I think will sum up the kind of economic development we have had in the last couple of years and that we are having now. The village was ranked number one in retail sales growth among the top 20 Chicagoland suburbs in 2016. Uh, for those of you who aren't in the business, that means sales tax. Skokie ranked 11th overall among the Midwest United States top 20 wealthiest communities. Now, if you went anywhere, who would have said Skokie, Illinois is one of the 20 wealthiest communities in the Midwest. You think about all of the large cities, all of the economic development going on in the Midwest, you would not think Skokie. We are a middle, middle class community. We don't pretend to be something that we're not. 
but we do have strong partnerships. Let me just give you one statistic that I think summarizes the economic activity in the village, rather than go through a long laundry list. Just drive around the village. Uh, hard hats, cranes, and earth movers are my friend. And you will see quite a few of them. But this statistic, in 2007, just before the Great Recession, the village of Skokie's highest number of building permits in a single year was 3,500. That's a lot. For three consecutive years now, 2014, 2015, and 2016, we have had in excess of 5,000 building permits per year. Uh, we've had to hire additional staff in order to speed up the process. What that means is that every sector of the village, home, business, not-for-profit, are all building. And that is investment in the village of Skokie. I think one of the things that we have done, and hopefully none of you have really noticed it, but we have transitioned in the village of Skokie. Over the past three or four years, we've had a new police chief, new fire chief, new village manager, new assistant village manager, new corporation council, and several new members of the Skokie Village Board. And yet, if you read the survey that was taken just last year of village services, you would see that every one of our departments is in the 90th percentile for customer satisfaction. We have not lost a beat. And I think that's due to the community because all of our employees are your servants. And it brings me to a special thanks that I want to give to the Skokie Chamber of Commerce. A little unusual in uh, the address that I give uh, on this occasion. Ordinarily, I give you a laundry list of projects, and I will get around to that. <laughs> However, there's one thing that I do want to talk about briefly because I, I've had a few people ask me in a questioning, not a critical way, but I think it needs to be addressed. Uh, in January, a group got together of stakeholders in the village not-for-profits, schools, park district, library, the usual suspects, and got to talking about the national discourse. I will try to restrain myself and to be polite. I don't think I need to tell anybody in this room, whatever your ideology or partisan affiliation, because all sides were guilty of it. It was not presidential in quality. In many respects, it was hatred. And it's up to our community to address it. The village of Skokie is the most diverse community in the state of Illinois. 86 different languages are spoken in our homes. There are people in our community who are from 100 or more countries around the world. That's a great strength. Our young people in our schools learn how to get along with people from other countries. And when they grow up and they go into business, or they go into academia, or they go into the philanthropy world, 
They are prepared to know people from all over this world. That group decided they wanted to put together a program that would keep us together, not let us be separated. Took a little while. Try and think of a slogan. And the group went back and forth. Some of the slogans were a little legalistic. Some of them not workable. Finally, they came up with a slogan that I think is simple, but it's profound. Because it says exactly what we are. Skokie welcomes everyone. You can drive down the street anywhere in this village. And believe me, I have. You can see the signs. Now, I know a little bit about signs. Never been in the business, but I've been in the politics business. I know what kind of signs attract people's attention. Won't get too scientific here, but you have a second and a half when you're driving to read a sign and normally when you're driving, you will see probably 20, 30, if you're on the expressway, a couple hundred signs in your commute. So how do you, as the advertiser, get people to absorb the essence of the sign? It's got to be simple. You have to design it so it's readable. And it has to be eye-catching. Uh, a young woman at the Skokie Public Library designed it. And one of the things that she did that was really clever, probably doesn't get noticed, I didn't notice it myself uh, until I had a chance to uh, meet her, has different colors. Usually when you see a sign and then you see it again, you ignore it after that. I mean, it's normal. Uh, normal way when you're driving. She did it in different colors so it would catch your attention two, three, five times, however many times. The reason I bring it up here is recently a thousand four hundred and seventy economists across the country came together and wrote a letter to Congress urging the Congress to pass comprehensive immigration reform. When the former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors for George W. Bush and the former chairman of the same Council of Economic Advisors for Barack Obama could write and sign a letter together along with organizations like the Tax Foundation, the International Monetary Fund, the American Enterprise Institute, liberal and conservative, academics from all over the country, all of the different uh, views on the economy, when you can get 1,470 economists to agree on anything, means that you have a problem that needs to be solved for the sake of the economy. Now this came home to us because the village was one of 250, commun or 250 communities study by Crane's Business Chicago, that ultra-left, commie new, uh, business publication. Crane's took a look at the 250 plus communities. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And sifted through and came down to eight. The village of Skokie was one of the eight 
that they concluded were the best communities in which to live in Cook County. And this, <laughs> this is how they led it. And I think it's remarkable. A suburban melting pot, Skokie has long been a leader in embracing diversity. Now you would think in a business publication they would lead with one of the business opportunities in the village. But no, it's what we have done together in diversity. Add that to the town's high quality schools, easy transportation in every direction, and stores from small boutiques in its revitalized downtown to glittering fashion stores at Old Orchard Mall. And the result is a very desirable place to live. Most homes that sold for about the medium price in 2016 for, were bungalows, tri-levels, and ranch houses built in the middle 20th century. That's a testament for what you all have done and what you all continue to do. And in this coming year, we will see some other developments. Uh, you're all aware, I know, about uh, the target that is now being built on Dempster. 33,000 square feet. Uh, we expect it will be open sometime uh, late fall, early winter just in time for the holiday season. That will camp off the West Dempster Street project. We have some work to do on East Dempster, and we are going to approach that. The Village Board is now entertaining some significant projects designed for the old Desiree. Uh, we're fortunate that we have quite a few and the board is now investigating and doing our due diligence on each one of them. We hope that we will have an announcement this year. We are not going to be rushed. What we do there is going to be for the next 30 years, and it will help to cap off the downtown redevelopment. We're taking this project with the utmost seriousness. In addition to that, the Illinois Science and Technology Park continues to grow. We are now at 1,500 jobs and 25 companies in the park. And if you didn't see it, I'm proud to let you know that Forest City sold the park to a Skokie company, American Landmarks Incorporated. And I think Rich Grove, I think everybody knows Rich. Rich, would you stand up just for a moment? <laughs> Rich was with Forest City. And I'm happy to say that American Landmarks uh, has kept Rich on. He is now the project manager uh, there. The Senior executives from American Landmarks in the village have met on several occasions. Uh, we have met with the state of Illinois. The governor toured the site just recently. We met in extensive meeting with his staff as well as with him. And I think American Landmarks is going to have some exciting announcements to be making in the near future. The park, as it now exists, is almost leased up. The southern end of the park, that ugly shell, uh, will be redeveloped. American Landmarks has made the commitment. We are in discussions with the state of Illinois for their participation. That would add 150,000 square feet to the uh, park. We have more employees there now than when Pfizer closed. 
So we are making a lot of progress there. I also would like to introduce to you uh, a new uh, neighbor to the village and a project that we are all immensely excited about. And it's one that I've taken a very personal interest in. Don Schoenheider is with us. He is the Senior Vice President of Hillwood Development. And Don, if you wouldn't mind, just stand for a minute so everybody <laughs> get acquainted. This is a project that I'm particularly excited about. It's a, Hillwood is going to redevelop 15 acres in the southern end of the village of Skokie. Uh, you old timers, we call it the Omite property. Some of you might remember that. This is a significant development. 273,000 square feet of development. It will bring in at least 200 jobs, possibly 400 jobs into the village. That development means millions of dollars as an infusion into our community, and it will be good for our schools. Now this property, which has been off the tax rolls virtually and has been idle for close to a decade, will now go back on the property tax rolls. I've worked closely with Heiko over the past four years. Every so often, I would trudge downtown, meet with the CFO, and there were some obstacles on that property. Environmental considerations, the dimensions of the property, the soil, et cetera. And I'm very happy to say that we worked all of those problems out it was a great collaborative effort with Heiko, and I know that Hillwood is going to be a great partner for the village of Skokie. And Don, welcome. Thanks, we are. <laughs> we are expecting that we will have a groundbreaking within the next month, and that is a project that I think we can all look forward to. I want to bring to your attention a very nice development. This coming Monday evening, the Skokie Village Board will honor two of our businessmen as the humanitarians of the year. One you know, Rob Patter. How can you not know Rob Patter? <laughs> Uh, if you haven't met him personally, you've seen his cable TV commercials for Evanston Subaru in Skokie. <laughs> Great guy. I don't know anybody in business who does more outside of his business for a community. The other person we are going to honor is somebody I doubt very many of you do know. But he is somebody that is well worth your getting to know. Owns a business in the village of Skokie. Was on Howard Street. In fact, it was right near where, where Don's operation is going to be. S small business, 200 employees. I had never heard of it. It's a pharmaceutical distribution business. Called me one day, his name is Avi uh, Havlite Goldfeder, and asked me if I would like to come over. Sure. Uh, so my assistant and I went over. I didn't know anything about the business. He and I had never met before, I don't believe. But if a, if a business summons me, I'm glad to go. And we had a very nice, cordial conversation. He took me through the business. Really interesting. He gets pharmaceuticals and he distributes them to hospitals, uh, uh, specialized, you know, home health care types of things. 
very specialized business. I asked him, you know, thank you very much. It's great to be here. There's got to be a reason. Uh, and he just looked at me and said, well, of course there is. I need your help. What can I do for you? And here's what he said. My employees don't want me to move out of Skokie. And I do not want to move out of Skokie. And he literally turned and he pointed and he said, what you did down there to Avenue. So all of my employees, I've got 200, they all go down there. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they do their retail shopping. They love it here. He said, in fact, many of them have now moved to Skokie. So I said, that's, that's great, warms your heart. What is it you need? He said, I want to quadruple my business. He said, I'm ready to do it, but I don't have a piece of property where I can do it. And I want to stay in relatively the same area. I said, that's great. Let me see what we can do. I came back and uh, I went right over to Len's predecessor and to Leslie, into John, and I said, guess what? You have a great project. Find a place where we can quadruple this guy's business. We did. In fact, today he has doubled his employees. Uh, I went over uh, just a couple months ago to take a look at it. Uh, the name of the company is Farmore. Uh, I had trouble finding it because he doesn't want anybody to know where he is because the pharmaceuticals are very high powered and under the FDA he has to provide security with backup security with backup security etc. Went through the building with him and we're walking through and you could play football, two or three fields in it. And he, he was just bursting with pride. Get to one point and he says, Mayor, I want to show you something. He said, I'm very, this is what I'm proud of more than anything else. And I said, well, what is that? You know, I'm expecting some kind of high tech machinery. And he says, this room, this is a Muslim prayer room. I designed it myself. As we were going through all the specs, I insisted that we have this because some of my employees need to pray four or five times a day. And I wanted them to be comfortable. And he showed it to me. And then he starts explaining to me why there are, there's not a window in there, why the door is solid why it's very plain, why there's this rug down there. I, and not say, I mean, the man doesn't emote, except when he's talking about this. An Orthodox Jewish businessman providing a room for his Muslim employees to pray. Where else but in our village could that happen? I, I was blown away by that. As I'm leaving, I, I picked up, there was a magazine, uh, and I was thumbing through it, and what do I see but an ad for an upcoming award ceremony in New York honoring Rob Hatter and Avi Goldfeder for what they have done to help disabled in the workplace. He didn't tell me that, and Rob Pander didn't tell me that. I had to find it out by thumbing through a magazine and seeing an ad. But that is the kind of business community we have. And when you talk about 270,000 square feet or 33,000 square feet or sales tax and all of these kinds of things, it's nice. We're going, Village is going through its budget right now. 
So we're, our eyes are glazed over with those kinds of spreadsheets. But it's when you see what people do day to day. 3,000 signs plus are up. People drive around this village. The, uh, Joy mentioned that I am proud to uh, be on the adjunct faculty at Oakton Community College. A uh, young lady came to see me this last week. I think it was Tuesday. Student, she's taking a course in American government, and her, the assignment she was given by her teacher was to do a presentation for her class on her community. Obviously, it was, she lives in Skokie. Perfect diction. Perfect sentence construction, verbally speaking. I, I say that you'll understand in just a second why. So we're going through this interview. Now she was asking me that the questions you would think, the menu that obviously the teacher had given for the substance of her presentation. Then she, she finally is getting toward wrapping up. And she said, Mayor, can I tell you something? Sure, anything. What, what, is there something I can do for you in addition to this? And she said, I, I just want you to know that I'm from Iraq. She said, I bet you didn't detect any accent. I said, no, as a matter of fact, I thought you were from the Midwest somewhere. She said, no, I'm from Iraq. My mother took me and my seven brothers and sisters out of Iraq on foot over the mountains to Greece and from Greece to Skokie, Illinois. I was six months old at the time. And my brothers and sisters owned two businesses on Oakton. And she said, where did you come up with the idea of those signs for Skokie welcomes everyone? I said, it wasn't my idea. I grabbed it. <laughs> I was happy to take credit for it, but it wasn't my idea. It came from, from our village manager, our not-for-profit, our business partners. But I said, I'm proud of it. And I said, well, what is it you want to tell me? And she said, well, and her eyes were starting to well up. And she said, I want to make my mother proud. She got us over the mountain on foot. We, we had nothing but our clothes on. And she got us here. And on top of that, we were very worried during the presidential campaign this last year. We are immigrants. I'm going to get my college degree. And I'm going to make my mother proud. And I said, that's great. I was about ready to start crying. The American story, writ large. Then she turned to me and she said, you know something? I want to make Skokie proud. You told us that regardless of what anybody else says, regardless of where we're from, if we act as Americans, we work hard, we go to school, we start a business, you don't care where we're from. I said, you're right. I said, you can go all over this village. And that is the kind of people we are. So, and I want Howard and everybody here to know how grateful we are when John called Howard and told him about the program. Without hesitation, Howard and Joy grabbed onto it and have helped us make it a success. So Howard, Joy, Skokie Chamber, thank you. We appreciate it. We're a great community because of you. Thank you very much. <laughs>